Welcome to Talking Hoosier Baseball. Uh, today is Wednesday, April 26th, 2023. Uh, I'm Carl James, joined by Chris Feeney and Cassidy Palmer. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've all gotten together. Uh, kind of a good couple of weeks, if, uh, if I'm going back and looking at the, uh, at the records correctly. Uh, there is a five-game week that included, I think, what is it, a sweep and a midweek sweep. Well, sorry, not a sweep. A series victory and a midweek sweep. And then a four-game week that included a sweep and a midweek victory. Um, and we're going to kind of break down uh, all of that as we uh, discuss those two weeks and a lot of other news around the program that has uh, been circling around in the last couple of weeks. Um, so this week, I guess we'll start with Cassidy. What's on your mind? Yeah. So one of the things that stood out these last couple of weeks in particular that I uh, took a little bit of a closer look at uh, was close games. Because there were quite a few close games. Looking at it, we've got one, two, uh, three, four, five of those games were uh, within two runs. And thinking back to last year, we really didn't win those close games often. Uh, felt like, felt like, uh, if it was going to be a close game, didn't matter what the score was. If it was going to be a close game, it wasn't going to go well. And looking at it, last year, for, for the entirety of the season, IU had 25 games that were within two runs. They were 10 and 15 in those games. So far in 2023, they've had 17 games within two runs and are 15 and two, which to me just feels like an insane switch. Um, and one of those losses came in this two week span. Uh, and so I looked a little bit closer at particularly uh, late game run scored. Um, so the last three innings. In 2022, so last year, the team averaged uh, about 2.3 runs given up per game in those last three innings. This season so far, that number's at 1.6. That's a 33% decrease, which is kind of insane. Um, but you can see there's a pretty big difference when you can lock down those later innings. Mm -hmm a bit more, those, those close games become significantly more competitive. Uh, and the bats have stayed strong enough that even if they do give up a few runs, we, we've seen over the last two weeks, we've seen a few three runs in the last three innings, five runs in the last three innings. Uh, but there's a whole lot of zeros in there as well. Uh, last season, we saw 11 runs in the last three innings twice. Oof. And so far, the highest we've had was eight. And that's far and away the highest. That is very much the outlier. Uh, so I just found that very interesting how kind of one, one, I say little difference. It's a big difference. But one thing of like tightening up those last three innings can lead to such a swing in these close games. And, it, and some of it is, we've, we've talked about it, the walks are down, the, the plunks are way down, uh, the whip's down, batting average against is down. Uh, looking at last year's numbers, we would expect to have 79 HBPs right now. We're sitting at 48. We would expect to see 236 free passes. We're at 179. Uh, I'd still love to see some of those numbers come down even a little bit further. But with such a young team, uh, this jump has been absolutely fantastic to, to see these, I guess, jumps the wrong word there. That's going up. That's going the opposite direction. Uh, 
but the, the improvement on control has been huge. Yeah. yeah, I think another thing, though, that Pete, Pete, that you have to factor into that, though, is just how the pitchers have been deployed. Mm-hmm. Um, in particular, you look at if you look at the game started, um, you know, the uh, <laughs> you know, Seti Manasseh has started the most games. Right now, he's also he's also got one of the best uh, the best ERAs on the team. Um, but he started the most quantity games because he because he's always in very short stint opens. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we look at where is he at in WHIP? So, but he's kind of in the middle of the pack. Still not bad. One point three two. I mean, honestly, these WHIPs are amazing. Yes. This is the thing that looks is, is oh, yeah. And I was sitting there comparing comparing other mm-hmm. teams, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pitchers. Indiana has less than one point eight WHIP. Yeah, and on <laughs> and on the season, uh, like for the staff, it's an 18% decrease in whip. It's a 9% decrease in batting average against. But you look at just Craig Yoho and Ryan Kraft, zero games started. They account for 63 64 innings between the two of them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And phenomenal numbers across the board for those two. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and they're pitching. The, and I think that's a big difference from last year. The, the top pitchers last year were starters. It was, you know, it was, it was Perkins. It was Bremer. Those were the guys that were, that were producing the numbers, but if, and they weren't yeah. generally pitching those late innings. Right. That's true. Um, but yeah, I think it comes down to the fact that you have 12 pitchers with a whip less than 1.8 is. Nuts. Yeah. Just yeah. the the complete depth of the of of the of this group is 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 phenomenal, um, and I think is a big piece of the uh, of you know why the team is is suddenly starting to get you know a lot of attention on a national level um, is because they're getting results and uh, and and I say suddenly because generally to get that kind of attention generally the buzz comes around a really good starting rotation mm. and you're dealing with a team that has literally one starting pitcher. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, would any of us have thought that, okay, we're, we're at the end of April with a, with one starting pitcher. What do we and, think? What do we think the record is? Well, what would we have all said? <laughs> well, we have one reliable good. starting pitcher. What do we think the record is? <laughs> Eight thirty-one 31 and 11. No, no way. And again, it, it strikes me uh, that we once again only have one pitcher with statistically enough innings to count. Kraft keeps going right at that edge, but uh, yeah, he, he's an inning and a third shy right now of statistically mm-hmm. counting, but nobody else is particularly even close. And somehow they're making this work. Safety in numbers. Yep. Yeah. Safety in numbers. Coach has a big toolbox this year, and he ain't afraid to go through yep. it when he needs to. Oh, yeah. Well, but it also kind of goes to that 21 team. Um, because for us, it was so shocking how what was so good in 21 turned so bad in 22. Um, but again, it well, was. Well, a lot of them weren't there. But a lot of them were. I mean, let's be honest. We expected them to to progress, and they regressed. Right. You you had five guys go to the pros, and you had guys who we thought were going to move up actually move down. Right. Yeah. And it threw us all off. But also, I think it's not just that they moved down. It was that that in 21, when they only had to play three or four games a week, oftentimes only three games in a week, uh, not only because this is, you know, coach will talk a lot about that. Well, they didn't get midweek games, so they didn't get, you know, their their non-conference, you know, starting opportunities mm-hmm. and and deeper opportunities, all that stuff. But I think it goes more to the fact that they had enough pitchers that the moment someone showed signs of not having it, they just got pulled. Mm-hmm. And in 22... <laughs> Sorry, nope. there's nobody nope. behind you. You nope. gotta wear this. <laughs> Have fun, figure it out. Oh man, those are some rough ones. 
Yeah. And I, so I think a lo- there's a lot of that to where it's like, like sometimes the numbers aren't just a sign of, especially for guys that are up and down, the numbers aren't just a sign of, okay, well, you're really good because you haven't given up a lot of earned runs. Well, you might compare that same person on a different team where, well, you know what, this person has to eat innings. So they may have a really high ERA because when they don't have it, they still have to, they still have to throw a lot of innings. Mm -hmm. Um, When, when you're this deep, there's the option of, okay, he didn't have it today. So we're going to pull him now, put somebody else in, work with him, and then we'll get him, we'll get him straight on a midweek or whatever, and then be able to put him back out there. And, you know, so uh, there's a lot of advantages that come from the quantity depth that, that Chris mentioned. Uh, and I think this is one of them. It's just the ability to, 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 to shuffle the deck and, and make uh, switches on, on, on the fly to what happens. Another thing they usually say is nothing is an experience builder like experience. And <laughs> yeah. what Cass is saying, what's the number again? 15 and two. Yeah. Okay. You go 15 and two in 17 games that are under two runs. And I had no idea that was the number. I knew we were playing a lot of close games. And honestly, we've been playing close games against competition. We wouldn't have thought we would, but as long as you win, it doesn't matter. It's not like the college football thing where you get points for, you know, it was a good looking win or a bad looking win. (laughs) Right. But these close games actually build experience that you can't create, you know, at three o'clock on on a Wednesday afternoon after class. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we've won them all, you know, it, it pays off. You know, this isn't the 14 team where we just kicked everybody's ass. Yeah. It, it's not that team. Right. But you know what? We might be better prepared for a close game in the tournament than that team was. Yep. And I know that seems crazy to say, but maybe we are. You know, maybe, you know, we have to go on the road for, for a regional and, and we've had all this experience in close games. It doesn't matter. You know, what did Seinfeld say? You root for the laundry, right? They're not going to remember, oh, that close game was against Bellarmine, so it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter that we won. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're going to remember that we tied that game in the ninth and won it in the tenth. Or, or yeah. you know, that we made a big pitch to get uh, – the minute we took the lead in the eighth, we made big pitches in the ninth and shut, shut it down. And it really showed, I think, in these – what was it, nine games? Uh, the way I did it for the belts, I split it up. I mean, I kind of cheated a little, as you'll see when I pick my winners. But I split the nine games – I mean, I might as well, want me to just tell you what they are. I'm like, well, since we're yeah, talking about it, you just might, might as well go for it. Yep. Why not? So there's nine games, and I completely cheated. And I put Louisville in the uh, one side, and then I put the f- other five games in the other. So there's four <laughs> and five. And I did that because I wanted to give belts to certain people. So I will admit that. Uh, so for the Illinois, obviously, the Friday night uh, did not go well at the end, but we fought, you know. Um, Devin Taylor had a great game, even in the Friday loss, and continued it the rest of the weekend with the two wins over the weekend for us winning the series. So Devin's going to get the Alex Dickerson award, uh, three home runs hit the grand slam. Somehow we didn't get player of the week from the big 10. I really think he got robbed on that, but they did give him the freshman player of the week. So at least he got something right. And then for, uh, for the Tony Bennett award for the Illinois series in the Louisville game, I went with Philip Glasser. There was a lot of big double plays in the Illinois game. And also, he had to climb a ladder a couple times and make some nice catches. And really, it just gave me an excuse to talk about Phil Glatzer, who, honestly, I think we have to start understanding that this is the best guy we've seen please shortstop on this team absolutely since we've been watching. Yes. I did not see Mickey Morandini play. No. Apparently, he was very good. Uh, I didn't see him play. I think this young man is the best shortstop we've seen play in this ballpark or in Sunbauer in a long, long time. Um, he's, he's a special dude. So he gets the uh, Tony Butler award. And then for his performance against Louisville, Ethan Phillips is going to get the, uh, Joey Donato award four and two thirds innings. He, you know, set down seven in a row and just gave up the one run pitched way above his years. Um, you know, uh, you know, he kept going back out, kept going back out. He was having no problem though. Louisville's got a lineup. Okay. Maybe they're not, uh, Well, they were like number 10 when they showed up. I mean, they're not anymore because we beat them and then whatever happened after that. But uh, Ethan Phillips is going to get the Donato. Glasser gets the Butler for that series, and Taylor gets the the Dickerson. Then we move to the next set of games, and uh, Tyler Cerny is going to get the Alex Dickerson Award for for the Ohio series. Two home runs and a six RBI. Two home runs and six RBIs in one game. 
And I got to say, I think a lot of us talked about it. As Tyler had a little slow couple games, we, we were thinking freshman, freshman, uh-oh. But no, it was just a blip on the radar, and he came right back with his bat. And he's had a huge, huge couple of games. And it's honestly been two weeks he's been hot since he started getting hot again in Illinois. Uh, for my defensive award for the Tony Butler, I'm going Pete Ceruto strictly because in the ninth inning, now we're over his head with a guy on third base. So he's going to get the Tony Butler award for that series. And the guy who threw it to him, what's up? Well, you, you, you froze up. Oh, all right. You'll need- How long ago? Uh, it, just when I'm you start talking about up. Pete. Yeah, when you start start talking about Pete. All right. So for the defensive Tony Butler Award for this series, I'm going for Peter Ceruto. Strictly for the 95-mile-an-hour ball that he stuck his glove over his head and caught. <laughs> okay? Just that one play. Not that he's not a great defensive catcher and he threw runners out, but just for that one play. You talk about game-saving plays. You know, that's a tie ball game. It was a guy on third. Um, and the guy who threw him the ball is going to get the Joey Donato Award for a week, kind of fully. But his, uh, let me get put in with the bases loaded in the ninth <laughs> and wiggle my way out of it. And then he gets the game. You were just that two innings, mm-hmm. no, and, and wraps up the game. So uh, those are your awards for the second week. A lot of new winners, which I like too. And I might have cheated a little bit with moving games around, but that's okay. I'm allowed to. I do the awards. So, you know, <laughs> I, I felt it was okay. So, uh, Devin Taylor, Philip Glasser, Ethan Phillips, Tyler Cerny, Pete Ceruto, and Connor Foley for the belts. So, you had two super seniors and four freshmen. Right. That okay. I, I, was, That's how you do it. I was just about to bring this up while we're at the uh, nice, easy math of week 10 for percentages uh, on the Joey Donato. Award. Oh, and I'm going to have to check some of the, I've lost all track of who is what uh, class uh-huh. in, in all of the COVID and, and transfer heavy everything. Um, but let's see, we're at three, four, five, six, 60% of the, uh, the pitching red belts have gone to freshmen and sophomores. Nice. The remaining 40% have gone to Luke Sennard. <laughs> on offense we're at uh let's see two but 60 percent of the offensive awards have gone to freshmen and sophomores nice. and two three four five six seventy percent of the defensive awards have gone to freshmen and sophomores hey you got you got to call it the way it is and that's the strength oh, yeah. of our team i think we know that already Oh, right. Yeah. The, uh, Mercer says it all the time. Right. What is it? The foundation of the program is recruiting. And then the background is, uh, uh, is and player I mixed, development. I mixed that up because Sonard is a sophomore. Sophomores. Yeah. Sonard's a sophomore. Yeah. I did not. Re- I thought he was a junior. No. Nope. Sonard's a sophomore. So all 100 percent of the pitching red belts have gone to uh, freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. I know the other one really even more. Yeah. I, mean, I just know got the other- the other ones are nice and easy. I know Jesse has been here for more than two years. I know Calafi has been here for more than two years. And Glasser and Ceruto are super seniors. Yes. <clears throat> that 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 is just absolutely insane to me. And that's I had the roster pulled up because I was going through all of the by class. And you're looking at Devin Taylor, Tyler Cerny, Connor Foley. Uh Evan Whiteacre was really good at the start of the season. Ethan Phillips has come on really strong. Aiden Decker Petty has had his mo- moments. Braden Reisdorf has been really good. Uh, I mean, the the trio of Carter Matheson, Brock Dibbitts, and Josh Pine, that that's kind of obvious. Well, let's call that where it is. Brock is on a whole nother level. Yeah. Well, yes. There's Brock yes. Tibbetts and there's Josh Pine and Carter Matheson. Yes. but Because yeah. Brock Tibbetts is... I mean, we're oh, talking absolutely. about we, we're saying the best shortstop we've ever seen. Does is Brock in the consideration that maybe he's the best first baseman? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He's he's, he's, he's making a, a run for 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 Sam Travis. He's absolutely yes. right. Yeah. That's my I, point. I would mm-hmm. put him right up there with Sam Travis, and, and it's not hyperbole. I don't no. think that no. 2014 team. Obviously, the pitching is all them. Yeah. But somebody brought up to me at the bar, and that's how I started thinking about it. Somebody brought up to me at the bar on Saturday. How many position players? on this team 
would have started on that team. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. quite a few. Oh, Evan yeah. Taylor starts on that team in a corner, yep. right? Uh, Philip Glasser starts at shortstop. Yes. Yep. I, it seems like blasphemy, but I think Tippett starts at first. Uh, I, I don't know. It's close. They it's would have close. taught. They would have taught him a different position. Yeah. That, so that, that, that would be my argument. <laughs> That would that yeah. would be my argument there. Brock it's, Tibbetts would have been a fantastic second baseman, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's wild, and that's that's the best team that's ever ticked the field. I mean, I know they didn't go to the World Series, but if you look at it, that's the best play, you know, player by player Most team. Round, I would think that took Most the field. Rounded, yeah. 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 So I, this it, team's got something special cooking, and and, and it's you proved it right <laughs> off the start of the podcast. Fifteen and two in close games. Yeah. I don't care who yeah. you're playing. No, no. And, and like, like I said earlier, those were games that were more often than not losses last year, regardless of the score. It could, it could be a 16 to 14 game. It could be a four to three game. Didn't matter. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot my prop here before I was going to break this out. I'll break it out now (laughs) for the the 31 wins. There you go. (laughs) All right. <laughs> I hope you can see this. Yes, That's the 31. Okay. Yeah. That's the 31. We have won uh, 31 games. Well, basically, we've won 30 games for the first time since Coach Mercer's first season. Yep. Up until then, we had nine straight. I looked it up from Skip to Limo to, to Coach Mercer. We had won over 30 games, nine seasons yep. in a row. So it's nice to get back to that. Yep. And already set the Bart Kaufman home wins record and we've still got what one two three uh six more to go no four five six seven seven eight somewhere in that eight yeah because there's two series plus uh usi and evansville yeah oh i forgot about the midweeks you're right yeah yeah i was thinking purdue and maryland yep oh you want to know about maryland this weekend carl uh, i got good stuff for this you want to do this uh, well, actually, <laughs> since we just you just gave out a uh, a uh, red belt to Ethan Phillips, I think we should bring our special guest in. This so. is why call. This is why call drives the boat. <laughs> Good idea. So let's bring in Ethan Phillips. All right. Well, now comes uh, the special guest portion of the show today. Uh, we do have a very special guest with us. We have the Big Ten Pitcher of the Week here with us. We have Ethan Phillips. Ethan, welcome to Talking Hoosier Baseball. Hi, right, thank you, thank you. Uh, so as we usually do when we have a, we have a player guest, uh, first we just kind of want to get an idea from you. Uh, how, how are things going with the team? How are you guys feeling about uh, this past week and, uh, and, and what you guys are thinking about heading into Maryland? Um, I think, I think we're feeling really good. You know, it's, it's always good to come off a sweep. Um, I think that, you know, we all realize that we have a really special team this year and, um, you know, chances like this don't come around, uh, all the time. So every game we just are, are looking to, to get the win and, and build towards the postseason. Um, or we're taking it one game at a time. And, uh, you know, I think we're, we're having success. So it's just helping us build momentum right now. I got to ask you, Ethan, what was the vibe of that clubhouse or locker room when you guys started to realize that uh, coach had decided to go for that uh, Louisville game and not just treat it like a throw in midweek? I mean, I think we all we all got there ready to go. Um, I think we we all knew, you know, we've got guys who who came from Louisville and, and a lot of old guys who were just, you know, ready to take it to them. And and we've got the team, you know, it really wasn't a, a surprise that, that the game went that way. You know, we, we were ready to go. and. And we came out and, um, you know, we were just we were just happy to be on the same page as the coaches, which which we usually are. Um, and, you know, we all kind of went at it as a unit and we're all on the same page. So you kind of assumed it going in. Yeah, I mean, we I we like went it. in. Um, we knew that we were going to give them our best stuff and and take it to them because because we had it and we were able to, you know, throw Seti on uh, on Tuesday. And we knew that he was going to be able to come back and and pitch on the weekend. So. We, we just gave them, you know, our best shot there. It paid off, man. It was great stuff. Yes. Anytime we can yeah, beat those sure. guys, it's a good day. Yeah. yeah. And and with the Louisville game, you came in in the uh, third inning. And at that point, 
you were trailing. But then in the bottom of the third, the team put up five runs, uh, batted around, great time. Uh, how does that change your uh, your focus, your uh, your play in the next inning coming off of that? Because you then went one, two, three, just three up, three down. Um, I mean, that's a great question. I think, I think in general, when you, when you come, when you come out and you know, it's a big game, you get a, a little bit of, of cushion, um, a little, a little bit more of, uh, an urge to just, you know, attack the, the first, you know, with the first pitch and because you know that that, that solo home run isn't going to beat you, it's not going to change the game. But I think coming into the game, um, with our offense, you know, it's been talked about so much that. We, we knew it was going to happen eventually. We, I, you know, I, I didn't know if it was going to happen, you know, that inning or maybe it would happen in the eighth or ninth, but we knew that, that, that one run wasn't going to hold. And, you know, we, we had it um, and we had, it was coming sometime. Such a different vibe this year that you guys feel the confidence from the bats and the bats mm-hmm. feel the confidence from the arms. Um, towards the end of the year, we started to notice that last year, but in the beginning, it just seemed like they were going against each other. And it's such a great thing to see how you guys are all kind of intertwined this season. And, and I mean, I guess that's how you go 31 and 11. So either way, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> really good to see just as a fan watching, you know, from the stands. Yeah. It's good to feel in the locker room too, for sure. So what, what is the vibe right now? Uh, really thinking about thinking ahead to this very critical Maryland series. Um, I mean, you know, we're going to take it to them. Uh, they're, they're a good team. We've seen it, you know, we kind of, we see that they haven't lost, you know, a big 10 series and hundreds of days and, and, you know, they're a good team and, and we we're a good team and, and uh, we want to win the big 10. And, you know, uh, coach Mercer always talks about how the big 10's going to come through Bloomington this year. And, um, you know, this weekend's part of that. We've got to come out and fight, but I think that we're fully prepared. There's no real, sense of um it doesn't feel like a different weekend we just know that they're a good team and and you know i i think we're still we still have that confidence and um that momentum that we're just building and and we're going to play our game and um you know hopefully it'll be great baseball for you in particular uh when i was a couple of years back i'll admit i probably would have known all your high school accolades and, and what you got but i don't right now so i, I honestly want to ask you you know, going through high school and now pitching against Louisville and now facing these big 10 games, what's the difference for you? Did you pitch in any state finals or any of the playoffs? Um, I, I pitched in uh, a couple big games in high school, but unfortunately my team never made it to the state finals. You know, we, okay. I played on a great team. We were uh, consistently nationally ranked, uh, but you know, my senior year, we, we had to play another nationally ranked team four times and Oof. we beat them three and the fourth time they got us and, you know, in the regionals and they bounced us. So it was a tough Damn. ending, but you know, I, I played high school baseball in Tampa. So a lot of my friends and a lot of guys that I played in, in high school and in the travel circuit, you know, they play at the Florida States, the university of Florida's um, I'm actually good friends with Ethan Petrie, who's, you know, ripping it up at South Carolina right now. So, so I've kind of been around these hitters um, mm-hmm. and coming into college, it, it's different, you know, you it, it's a different level of baseball, but as I've kind of, you know, settled in and, and gotten more of an opportunity, I see that, you know, I've, I've faced hitters that are, that are this good and, and play, you know, at, at high level programs. So it was almost just a realization of getting back to, um, you know, th- that, that confidence of, of pitching and, and just playing my game and, and, you know, having the confidence that um, I'm just as good. I've competed, you know, with hitters that are great and, uh, just just playing the game of baseball. Uh, can you talk just a little bit about, um, you know, the, the, the arm care piece? Because you did actually, you know, pitch over eight innings in a, in a one-week period. Uh, how you felt and, uh, and, and how you basically, you know, re- kind of recovered from, from that particular, from, from that much use, which had not been typical, at least for you in college so far. Um, I mean, coming into IU, we've actually – implemented this pro this program called arm care um and it it, uh it kind of is just like a monitoring and testing of our arms and so we we had a kind of we we use the bands we use crossover symmetry bands uh every day and we had a a strength program to strengthen our back and and stuff like that Uh, and so just kind of developing that routine coming in has helped 
my arm feel good and feel strong. And then, um, you know, at, throughout the week, we we built up in the fall. Um, we played scrimmages, so I had thrown a, a decent amount of pitches. Um, and so I was just able to kind of uh, take a, a day or two off, take it light, and then just be ready to go. I think um, I think normally it, it only will take me probably two or three days to be ready to go again, you know, unless I were to throw maybe 100 pitches. But I feel like uh, just because of, of the routine and obviously the, the training staff that we have here is, is great, and, you know, they're always here for us. So anything I need, um, they'll help me out. Uh, and so just just with those bands and the strength and all that kind of stuff it it kind of it makes me feel good I never really feel uh, like I'm I'm really hurting the day after or anything like that excellent now you definitely didn't seem like a freshman on the mound against the group. what was it seven guys in a row you got out then the post game interview you're calm you're cool collected like you've done this before but I'm sure there's been a learning curve like who has helped you out in the locker room as far as uh, mentoring I think a lot of guys step up, um, you know, a lot of the older guys from, from the catchers and Pete and Matt, you know, they're, they're always, it, it's great to have a catcher that you can trust and, and, you know, who, you know, has your back and they both have been great. Um, and I know that, the, that they, they work with the other guys. Um, and then the pitching staff, you know, you, you have older guys. I think that, um, you know, Ben's, Ben's a very experienced veteran. And I think that coming in, you know, he was a new guy in the fall and, after going through that and being there, he's kind of found his role and um, he, he, he stepped up and, and he shows us the ropes a little bit. And, um, you know, I think that, that, you know, Ty's been here forever. He he's, he's great. He, uh, he always works well. He, he knows, you know, the program better than anyone. So, I mean, we, we have a big mix of young guys and old guys. And I think that a lot of the older guys know that, you know, the young guys have a lot of talent and that it's, they feel uh, like they, you know, shouldn't mentor them. And, and it's been uh, very beneficial for all of us. So I couldn't name someone specifically, but a lot of them have really stepped up. <laughs> it's yeah, a, you nailed it. It sounded like the, the bats in the room. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the thing is, is that's the, I, I we, we've asked this of multiple pitchers and uh, it's not like your guys are being inconsistent. We're hearing the same, the same names over and over again. So, and we've had a chance to talk to both uh, Ben and Ty in particular. So we, uh, we've, uh, we've heard from them directly too. Yeah. So you guys looking at the, uh, the internet much lately? Uh, we don't talk about it much, you know, every once in a while I'll, I'll give Twitter a scroll and, you know, I, I try not to read too far into it. Um, but you know, we see stuff, we see all the articles, um, we see the, the rankings and, and the projected fields, but we don't really read into it. We don't really look into it because at the end of the day, um, we get, you know, we can go two ways and whatever they say right now really doesn't matter. Yeah, turn that stuff off, man. It don't matter. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's more of the purview of the of our group uh, <laughs> to uh, to to uh, placate the uh, to placate the fans and everything and, and all of uh, of our big thinkings and thoughts. Uh, yeah. And you know, you guys, you guys, you know, you have to go out there and live it every day, uh, and and yeah, actually and actually perform and, um, you know, and then of course deal with the, the inevitable ups and downs of the game because things can go great for a long time and you can do everything right. And things can go wrong for a long time. So. Yep. Yes, for sure. Cool. All right. Was there any, uh, anything else you wanted to, uh, to express to the, to the fans today, Ethan? Uh, I mean, I think we're, we're grateful for the fans. We, we love, uh, you know, everybody who comes out to support and we're hoping as the season goes on, it gets warmer. We can keep getting more and more people out there because, you know, the more people are there, the more, the more fun it is for us, but we enjoy, we obviously enjoy playing at home as you can tell by, by the record, but, um, yeah, you, do. you know, <laughs> we, uh, we're thankful for everybody who's there for sure. All right. Well, we are uh, very much looking forward to seeing, 
uh, seeing you pitch again, uh, to seeing the team take uh, take on Maryland this weekend, and uh, we are we are right with you, hoping that uh, we get a lot of fans out to the Bart and get it to look uh, as full as it does in Chris's picture there. So Chris's <laughs> yeah. background there. That was against Louisville, and we beat them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, that was like five years ago or something. All right. Well, Ethan, thank you very much for joining Talking Hoosier Baseball today. Uh, it was really great to have you on, and congratulations on the on the recent award, too. So, Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, man. Good luck. Stay healthy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we had we got to have the uh, the reigning Big Ten pitcher of the week here on Talking Hoosier Baseball. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Right after uh, Chris Chris gave him a red belt, so <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to guess the setup and mention it because you never <laughs> want to just like you know you know feed it. They're feeling good enough already. It sounds like from talking to him what he just said, right? So yep. I didn't need to throw in the red belt. But uh, you know you gotta you gotta you gotta be happy about you know the attitude and the you know hey we know what we're doing but uh, we're not they didn't feel like they're didn't sound doesn't sound like they're they're letting all of the the rather crazy national hype uh, really impact them at all. So I think that's a positive thing. I yes. feel like a confidence, not a cockiness. And I like yeah. that. So. Yeah. There's a, there is a firm line there with that. Yep. Yeah. It's nice to be recognized, but there's, mm-hmm. there's work to be done. Yep. So <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, Chris, you were going to uh, talk about the Maryland series. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is cool. I didn't even realize this until uh, I was looking at the times, honestly. I want to make sure I had the times right. So Friday is 6 p.m., Saturday is 1 p.m., and Sunday is 12 noon. But they're also, and I'm surprised they haven't been promoting this, but it's 2013 College World Series anniversary, 10-year anniversary weekend. So they mentioned there's going to be a lot of giveaways throughout the weekend. Uh, one of them they specifically mentioned was a 10-year anniversary roster trading cards. So that'd be pretty cool. I definitely want to get my hands yeah. set of those. Uh, also, a college 2013 College World Series poster. Um, you know, that's Sunday specifically, and the cards were Saturday. They didn't specifically say what was going to be Friday night, but uh, it did say, you know, giveaways. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, of course, Saturday, as always, is Bark in the Park. You could bring your dog. You could get some cards, and you could beat Maryland, which is always fun. And then Sunday, I know this is Nancy's favorite. We have the baseball bingo. And then you can run the bases uh, for the kids, you know, after the game and get autographs with the players after you beat Maryland. So it's really, I mean, you know, it seems like a pretty good deal if you want to head out to the BART for the IU Maryland series. Some say it's the top two teams in the Big Ten, power ranking-wise. I mean, I'm not one to say that. But I don't really think Maryland's as high up as that. But some say that they are. Uh, they're obviously a very good team. They won 48 games last year. They've got a first-round draft pick playing at shortstop with Shaw. Um, luckily, there's no more Costas's, apparently. Uh, I feel like a Costas <laughs> has been on this team. We're like, out of no, I think they're out of Costas. No Costas's. more Costas's? No. So it's I'm, I'm been glad. a while. <laughs> but those guys killed us, right? Oh, every year. Oh, those damn Costas's. They appear All to the be out of the party parties. Uh, but see, the one thing I'm going to prepare us for you know, by the time you watch this or whatever, if they do hit a home run, they have this ridiculous hat that they wear. It's like really, really ginormous. It's it's ridiculous. It's right up there with USA Chance that they were doing. <laughs> uh, it, it's just bad. But I'm excited, definitely. I mean, we obviously have a history with this team going back to Dieter hitting bombs in the rain and, you know, Tony Butler and Cangelosi standing back. Uh, oh man, what was that other guy's name? The pitcher that that threw it Feynman after Miller took him deep. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Murphy. Murphy. Uh, for Murphy, and then Coop had to break up the fight. Remember that they did play Lazy <laughs> Mary at that game, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then and then you got the Big Ten tournament, right? We we play that great first game with them. Yes, it didn't work out well, but then we get our rematch, and we're the first eight seed ever to knock out a one seed, and it got to be Maryland which was pretty great. Uh, so, I don't know. Even in football, basketball, I always say any day that we beat Maryland is a good day. And, uh, you know, this weekend, let's do it three times is, is my uh, hope. <laughs> yeah. That, I, I feel like that's always the hope. Yes. 
You know, I never say two out of three against Maryland. I always want to sweep them. They call themselves dirty Terps. I call them shady Terps. They're going to be up to some shady business. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll be able to point it out. Uh, hopefully a lot of people in the stands, weather seemed all right. I do want one lightning delay. Um, I'm figuring we'll get one. I was, I will say I was kind of bummed that like with, with how high level this series is, every year as a whole doesn't matter which location it's always great turnout great energy and great games and not one of them is on btn that yeah, that felt disappointing it's because their show their saturdays are all spring football yeah. they could have showed it sunday almost or, or all, friday almost all day even i get that i get the saturday show friday no, and sunday though not to me Spring games are like basketball exhibition games. They go on BTN plus. They go on Big Ten plus. <laughs> They'll get those, the eyeballs on the TV. Those, yeah. those do not go on BTN when there are active live varsity sports. I, I want to agree with you, but I do know that fifty thousand people go to these spring games. I'll give them Saturday, but Friday and Sunday need to be on the Real Network. But Rutgers. Or whatever, whatever games right, are put Rutgers, on the Big Ten. But, no, but I mean, Rutgers, the Rutgers football spring game needs to be on BTN over. Is that what they're playing? Not Ohio State or Penn State? I can't State remember. Or... I can't remember if that's this. Something tells me it's not. Cassidy, Rutgers. all the people in New York week. City are dying to watch Rutgers spring yeah. football. It's not, I don't think it's Rutgers. <laughs> but all those yeah. other programs, there's a lot of a lot of interest. There is. Oh, Ohio oh, State, Michigan, Ohio Penn State, State, I get it. Right. I, I get it. I, I, I get it. kind of get those ones, but Rutgers and Minnesota? Minnesota, those, too. They'll nah. probably get 40,000 at that spring game. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm not even interested enough to watch our spring game, and I'm but a huge IU sports fan. Like that, it's a different world. That different belo- world. And, and how many people know, watch Hoosier Hysterics and show up for that? Oh, yeah. and, 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 and I have absolutely watched that one. Um, mm, that's because it's a basketball school. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think the bigger picture thing with this is, and, and I'm sure once Big Ten forces the point on replay, they're going to have to up the quality of Big Ten Plus, and it'll be a moot point. Yeah. Because, uh, yep. and, and I know I complained about this on Twitter, and and I get that it was low five hundred weekend, but the single static camera is is just unacceptable for having to pay extra above whatever cable satellite TV subscription you pay, mm-hmm. even small the Mac. The Mac has replay. The Mac has full video production for pretty much every game. Yep. That is unacceptable from the Big Ten. And I'm hoping with the new commissioner and the push for replay that we will get that. Yeah, it had that it was that moment uh in the uh in the Ohio series. When uh, there was a close play at first, and, he and, and the runner him. is like, put, he's like, dude, he's like, dude, yeah. where, where do you think you are, the Mac? Yeah, <laughs> right. This is the Big and, Ten. We don't do that here. No. And to me, that's that's the insanity. Like, if you tell me that the SEC or the Pac-12 have all the bells and whistles, I get that. Baseball is is a bigger thing there. <laughs> Yeah, well, the Pac-12 isn't is almost is pretty much where the Big Ten is. It, 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 yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised if some if, if those have a yeah. few more belts. The whistles. ACC but, and the Big but, Twelve are are far above this. So. Right, but tell, oh, the but, Sun Belt has replay. Right, yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> telling me that the MAC has right. replay has the full has video replay too. production. Yeah. yeah, and the Big Ten doesn't. It's mm-hmm. insane. And and it, and at the moment, it all comes down to the video production because if all you've got is a single static camera, you don't have replay. You no. you can't even see the play. Period. Yeah. And so and I and and while I loved not having to sync my phone with with Austin Render's uh, radio call, the fact that there was not a single. For for the Friday Saturday for the the days where Little Five Hundred was going on, there wasn't 
separate TV commentary that I'm sorry, that's pathetic that 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 whole situation. I, I get it uh, early season when it's uh, women are hosting NCAA first couple rounds yeah. like that is fair. That is well, absolutely fair. But for it to happen for little 500, I'm sorry, that's not acceptable. Yeah. And it's not that, that there isn't talent available. And in fact, there were not one, there were two radio broadcasts because WIUX yeah. covered yep. the whole weekend. Yeah. Um, so the point is the students, the student media is there yep. and is providing plenty of coverage. Yep. Uh, it's simply a matter of having the more of the back end organization. Um, and again, I, I, and you are, I, I think you are right in that. I think the new, the new TV contract uh, combined with, replay that just has to happen um yeah. i think all those things are going to kind of happen at once in the same time you at ucla and uc at usc yep. are coming into the league yep. i think all those things will yep. even will finally solve this yep. i think it's going to get solved yeah might not be next year but definitely by the year after yeah i think yes yeah, it i think 2025 it's going to be it's going to be good i'm hoping things will get a little bit better in 24 i yes. wouldn't necessarily say that's going to happen but right. i think things are going to be in much much better shape in 25 right and, and I, by no and i'm just hoping that maybe the the contract will be more like what we're seeing from the sec and the acc yep. and uh and they may finally get rid of the extra paid subscription piece and honestly uh, i i think the biggest difference espn versus fox sports yeah i think fox sports needs to up their game Yep. to to match what ESPN is doing. We 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 keep signing these big massive contracts with Fox Sports instead of ESPN and this is what we get. So, yeah, but the point is I think hopefully Fox Sports will take that competition and, and pr pr yes. produce a better a better yes. quality out yes. of all of this. Yeah. Uh I you know when it comes to the, I mean, the, uh, here I'll give you an example right now, uh, because most of the sports I'm interested in, it, to follow on a on a visual basis, are ones covered primarily by the Plus. Yeah. I don't have a main TV subscription. Yeah. Now I have access to one next door. <laughs> <laughs> so if I when I really want to watch something, I will go next door and watch it. But, uh, but if if the the Olympic sports were more accessible via that via a main subscription, I would be more likely to get an actual TV subscription. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's just one example. And yeah. that of course would bring, that does impact the overall success of the, uh, you know, of the ability of the network to, to succeed. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think that's an important piece. Yep. But the amount they charge and, and it's not an Indiana specific problem. Yes, we we have seen this lots of. I remember. I think the first place I remember really hating that single static camera was Michigan State. Yep, and there's it was just horrible angle. You couldn't see anything. I think theirs weren't crooked though. Ours was crooked. Ours was crooked, and that that was bugged, weird. That bugged me. Yeah, but um, but, but yeah, Iowa. This used to be a problem at Iowa, um, yeah. but I know that the, the that I think Nebraska was was here over a little five week and their fans were really complaining about oh, it last yeah. year. They complain <laughs> about ev everything. Yeah. They're, they're more vocal than anybody else. Yeah. Well, they have a more, they, obviously they have, they have the most dedicated <clears throat> fan group in the league. Yes. So I mean, they yes. there had been a traditional, you know, baseball powerhouse. Yes. They have reason, mm -hmm. but I can get off, off of my soapbox <laughs> now and, but it's a great segue into the picks because it's Big Ten, you know. It yes. is. It, it is. is Big Ten, and it is. It is time to do our picks. Uh, uh, Cass knew it. Cass was just driving the car into the picks. <laughs> well, she <laughs> wants to brag. Oh, yes, gosh. she does because oh. of the the week that Cass <laughs> had this past week. <laughs> yep. Just when we thought, just when we thought Josh was about to just run away with this thing, uh, it turns out that is absolutely not the case. <laughs> So we had now, of course, this is the if there was a week it was going to happen, it was going to be during Indiana's bye week because it means there were six series to pick. Um, but uh, yeah, Cass just blew us all away. Cass going five and one. 
The Oof. only mistake uh, Cass made was uh, in picking the uh, picking Sparty uh, to beat Michigan, which uh, it did not happen. But we all made that we same all mistake. Made. Uh-huh. So, mm-hmm. uh I I find I become less invested in those ser- following those series uh, on the weekends, the ones where we all pick the same because I'm like, yep. technically doesn't matter which whichever way. Nope. But uh, it's a but push. Cass, it's a push. Yeah, yep. Cass made ground um, over Chris and I by picking Penn State over Ohio State, um, and uh, made ground big time with Josh by picking uh, Illinois over Minnesota. That was another one of Josh's oddballs. I, I, I don't. I, yeah, but I mean, it paid off for him the last time. I get it. So yeah, I, 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 that I understood. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, we were split right down the middle on Iowa and Nebraska, oh, Nebraska. and Iowa yeah. just had their way with mm-hmm. the horn huskers um, which 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 from a an rpi perspective we like that very much so yes because indiana doesn't play nebraska this year uh-huh. so um i mean nebraska looks like they're going to be doing well enough to get to the big 10 right. tournament which is so good for the conference because yes. really they need nebraska to be in nebraska for the yes. tournament <laughs> yes mm-hmm. it's going to help attendance <laughs> yes uh, but, uh, but Iowa, obviously, I mean, I, Iowa draws well for the big 10 tournament yep. as well. And, uh, you can see we, Iowa from the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we saw Iowa play here. Iowa is a really good baseball mm-hmm. team. They so. just had a gauntlet to start the season. Yes. Um, so that was last week. So now let's get into the current week. So the current week, we've got five series. So we're back with Indiana playing again. So, uh, we at talking Hoosier baseball will not be picking the, uh, the Indiana Maryland series, um, because, uh, and, uh, the, uh, the Hoosier networks podcast on, uh, Indiana baseball, uh, Sunday reds, they all do pick. That was actually the more entertaining part of their, their show today was, uh, <laughs> was what was them was them picking but of course uh i'm we just couldn't be as bold as 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 they are with that uh so we're going to focus on the rest of the big 10 um and we've got iowa traveling to penn state we've got uh rutgers at purdue illinois at ohio state uh northwestern at michigan state and minnesota at nebraska so since Cass is in is tied for the lead now, overall we'll have we'll start with Cass today. Ooh, Cass, what this, are your picks? This feels like pressure. Uh, <laughs> well, the the first the one that that honestly felt the easiest pick, even though it's on the road. I'm going Iowa over Penn State. Um, I don't know that they'll dominate the same way that they did against Nebraska, even though Penn State is arguably the weaker opponent, it is at Penn State. Um, I went back and forth on this one, but I I ended up with Rutgers over Purdue. I just don't quite trust Purdue enough enough yet, even though they're at home. I I don't see it being a sweep, but I think Rutgers pulls it off. Uh, Once again, took the, the road team in Illinois. Uh, but I think that one's close. Uh, Michigan State over Northwestern, because Northwestern, as far as this year is concerned, and Nebraska over Minnesota, because Minnesota and it's home for Nebraska. Chris, what do you got? Oh, you're, you're muted, Chris. I believe she just read mine. So me and Cass, uh, I mean, they're written down, so I can't. So yep. just to double check, you have Iowa, Rutgers, Illinois, Michigan State, and Nebraska. Yes. I have the same exact thing. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad they were written down. I have proof. <laughs> it's right here. I'd have to turn my camera around to show the other screen that well, I Well, you got. went first, so yes. you went first. Um, I have one difference. Um, I did pick Purdue. I am, okay. picking, I am picking Purdue in the Rutgers series. Um, I like, I like, I like the Boilermakers at home right now. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not, I am really not sold on Rutgers. That's fair. Um, 
Yeah. If I were actually picking number of games, I say Illinois sweeps Ohio State, but I, I have lost so much faith in Ohio State at this point. That... <laughs> yeah, the, the Rutgers-Purdue one was the one I was going back and forth mm-hmm. on the most. I'm really curious how Penn State is going to play Friday with mm-hmm. Iowa. That's the one I think that they are most likely to get, even going up against Brecht. Uh, Brecht I, I, so I'm just wondering I, if they might do different than what they did with Indiana, right. which is take those two pitchers and have them both throw Saturday. That's fair. <laughs> and get That's one. Fair. And just get one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because the thing is now, I, the point is with Brecht is it depends on which Brecht shows up. Yep. And, you know, if, if he's if he's struggling to locate his off speed and they can time up his fastball, maybe, you know, maybe they can run him. So, yeah. Yeah. I it, tell you, he picked then, a hell of a night to have a hell of a night against yeah. us. Oh, yeah. All those Absolutely. scouts were there. You know what I mean? It was like the McKay Brown thing, right? We didn't know what we were going to get out of him. Sometimes yeah. we would get like no hit. 14k stuff and yeah. sometimes he loses control a little bit but the scouts always knew he was an absolute you know high draft pick yeah this kid's gonna have the same thing i guess yeah and i i do want to point out that warren nolan has uh penn state winning two of three mm. has has iowa iowa winning on friday and has penn state winning saturday yeah, Sunday. I, I just think there he, there's a, a little too much of a Win of a home bias I, there probably is and i think but. a lot of that it's interesting because the ncaa use that as their reasoning for for the rpi adjustment in home away mm-hmm. um i think the real reasoning was more as a gift to the north north oh, because absolutely. well because there is a like we we've talked about this early in february northern teams going down south there is a significant advantage, which isn't because the North team is playing in a way field. It's because the North team hasn't, hasn't been playing outside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a distinction. It's, it, 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 it's that whole, it, it, whole concept in statistics, which is that um, just because the, there is just because a number there, there is a, a result that, oh, yes, well, 66% of games are won by the home team. Well, there's two things in factor, what I just mentioned, which is unique to the, to the game of, of college baseball because of the weird timing and, and, and weather. But the bigger thing is simply, and you look at, at IU too, you say, oh, my goodness, IU is just crazy good at home. What is the record now? What, 22 and 1 now? Yep. Is that where, yeah. yeah. Um, but you look at it, you look at the, at, at Indiana's schedule. Now, granted, there are there there are some good ones, but like Iowa. But guess what? There's there's the loss two and one against Iowa. Yeah. There was a mm-hmm. loss there. That one is it was against Iowa. But Indiana's home schedule is significantly easier than Indiana's road schedule. Right. <laughs> yes. And that's the same across the country. You look at teams. Yeah. They're the you know when the SEC the SEC teams the only times they really go on the road is in conference. Yeah. Well, and who are they going on the road against? They're going on the road against Arkansas, against Tennessee, yeah. against Florida. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> those and are at, hard road games. <laughs> and at most, they're doing neutral site tournament stuff before conference play right. starts. So, I mean, not to say that there, there's a, there's there are there are some examples, but for the most part, the vast majority of these teams are their their home schedules are easier and then you have the teams that 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 intentionally go on these you know road tilts you know that these northern teams that go play really 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 tough i mean even indiana state has made a name for itself you know with its rpi with its tough schedule but still has only won two out of 11 of those games mm-hmm. so it's but it, it's just hey that's the typically the better team is the home team. I don't think it's that that you there is a home and field advantage as much as the better team is simply the home team. Yeah, <laughs> a good portion of the time. Yep. Um, I do not think I have Josh's picks yet. Uh, those will be up on the site um, before games get started on Friday. Um, but I, I doubt it's going to. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to see a big needle move this time. I, 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 I really don't. I just, yeah, the fact that you guys picked the same 
list and I was only one yeah. series off, I think is probably a, uh, a pretty good indication. <laughs> eh, I won't mind just focusing on this series. Yeah. Let me yep. just focus on uh, the shady Terps. <laughs> um yeah and it's just it's just it's we've just got uh, clear distinctions between the teams that are playing this week so yeah, yeah the, the, except in the big for, 10 except for our games right exactly yeah. the, 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 the series two facing off and the other ones seem tilted like you yep. said so it will also be interesting to see how the national media because you know this is going to be in everybody's national media pickums this series is going to yes. be yes yep so i'm really curious yeah. to see uh where the uh where D1, 11.7, uh, and all the other groups come down. Well, Maryland was ranked, what, 16th coming into the season, something like that? Yep. They were the so, only ones ranked, yeah. Yeah, whoever was in on them then might try to get back on board now and take the upset. Yep. You never know how they're going to go. I don't know. I'm just ready for it. It's been a long time, I feel like, since they've come in. Well, I'm going to throw a question out there. Ooh. If things were to go bad this weekend... Why would that be? What do you mean? If we lose the games? Yeah, lose the series. Lose Indiana the loses the series. I would think uh, their bats uh, scored too many runs. <laughs> we didn't execute. You know, we didn't execute. I feel like we're going to score. But if, say, we don't execute pitches, if the uh, if Mercer's toolbox doesn't, you know, execute, I know he has a plan. We know that. He's got everybody pretty well rested. Maryland's cocky. They played a double midweek this week, knowing they were playing us. <laughs> so they're going to come in uh, pretty cocky, as they always are. But if we don't execute, they've got the bats. Yeah. You know, and they got the kid, you know, the, the, the kid Shaw, and, and they're solid up the middle. They're fundamentally sound team. So, yeah, could they win a couple of games 6-4? I think they could. Yeah. But I'm going to say they're not going to. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I would be saying – pretty similar to that um kind of indiana's youth slumping is slump, both both pitching bats whatever like the the youth slumping all at one time would be my gen like no one is is really able to consistently string anything together at the plate or on the mound that would be my that mm -hmm. that would be my and that's kind of been in the back of my mind, like it, that was back of my mind against Iowa, another very solid opponent, because um, it doesn't take much of a slip against an Iowa, a Maryland. I, I would put Nebraska in there as a general rule. It does not take much of a slip for for the opponent to take advantage of that if they're good enough. And Maryland is definitely good enough. Yeah, I guess the thing that 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 I find so bizarre is that this hasn't happened yet. Right. And that's, and that's the part that, that the is just always, yeah, it's just always in the back of my mind. It's just, there's gotta be a point at which things don't go well. And it right. just, and I mean, I, you could say, well, some, some aspects of the beginning of the season, but, but I really more chalk that up to not really execution as in roles weren't filled out yet. It right. wasn't understood who were the, who were the right pieces to be in the right, Right. in the right places and especially when you're what we're talking about i mean as we said chris gave two-thirds of the belts out to freshmen this week yeah. those guys weren't getting significant playing time in those first uh first few yeah. weekends um and i'm not saying oh i'm expecting this to happen at some point no. it's just one of those things that's just kind of been making me nervous in the background right. it's just like there's gonna be a slip up at some point right <laughs> right because there there almost always is yeah and so far it's been one or two players at a time have it like we had Cerny had that pretty big slump and then he just came right back, but everyone else picked up around him. And, and so and, maybe, and right. And maybe that's just it. It's, it's the quantity and the depth that, I mean, I mean, and, and to say that we, there hasn't been anything. I mean, coach pointed this out right now. There is a little bit of hole in the lineup right now. The eight hole is not been performing. We've yeah. not been getting a lot of production out of that part of the lineup yeah um and there's they're they're rotating guys you know through that to see if somebody can catch some fire yeah. uh yeah. and that, that was something he just came right out and said and and maybe that's just what it is it's like hey there's 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 always been enough there and and i think i mentioned this before that there are 
what did I say? I counted it up. There are 12 pitchers who yeah, have something. Yeah, who have fun. less than a 1.8 whip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, Maryland, it's like eight. It's like six, somewhere Ooh. between six and eight. Yeah, it's – and Maryland's got a few solid pitchers, but they Maryland is just not that deep. Now right. – they have three legitimate starters, so right. so they don't have to. There's be more that innings. Deep. There's more innings packed into that group right. of pitchers. Um, so that's where the trade-off is. But overall, uh, Indiana has done a much better job at run prevention mm-hmm. than Maryland has. Maryland has actually really struggled in in that regard. Well, and at the same time, that the the kind of flip side <laughs> to only having one true starter you're not necessarily asking a lot of innings from any one guy outside of i'd argue craft Mm -hmm. uh pretty much everyone else you can you can say give me one solid inning and you've done your job if you can give me two solid innings cherry on the on the cake like that's that's the big difference you don't there's there's less pressure that you have to go four innings five innings if you go one great you did your job well but the thing is is they're going to need at least 18 to get a series win right you're going to have to add it up to at least 18 probably Mm -hmm. more because you have to figure that whatever that loss is there's going to be some some key innings burned in that. I and mean, it turns right. out to be a close loss. And that's that, I guess that kind of goes more to the point Chris that you and Chris were making earlier about close games Yeah, that, Hey, a close game, you lose a close game. And there's a, there's that extra penalty, which is that you've um, cause unlike Maryland who has, you know, there's three guys that are going to, their main three guys are going to get spread out between all three games. Yeah the advantage Indiana has is that, Hey, if things go really bad on Friday, Kraft is just not going to pitch and he'll right. be available <laughs> for right. for one of the other two games. Right. So. You don't throw Kraft. You don't throw Yoho. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So. Again, I just, I wanted to throw that, that, yes. that question out there just because it's been yes. kind of nagging at me. So yes. not that I am expecting anything poor to happen. It's just, it's just, we, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, there's, with all the national attention, there's been a lot of talk and expectations and you look at it and it's like, okay, well, you're projecting these great things to happen, but this projection is going to require that the team pretty much run the table. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's yeah. being projected. Yeah. And I'm like, again, relying on, on a, a group of freshmen running the table just doesn't feel like yeah. that is what should be projected, right. but. <laughs> and the the mar- and the margins margin of error here is paper thin. In, when in you're that talking hosting, ab- in that hosting versus right. not, which is which is why I say you know what that that should not be the expectation. No. The expectation at this point is get get this team into the postseason, yeah. and yeah. that doesn't require running the table. That yeah. requires a decent performance down the stretch, but doesn't require running the table. Yeah. Again, it's the the. Getting in and getting a solid seed is the expectation. Getting the host is the cherry on top. Yeah. Well, and there's also the the whole let's uh to like what Chris says. You know, we 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 like t-shirts. So yeah, if, if we can get a Big Ten championship t-shirt to kind of go along with that, that wouldn't be bad. that wouldn't be horrible. <laughs> and on my soapbox again, if they actually yeah. make them, would be nice. Because <laughs> 2019, <laughs> they didn't yeah. make them. Yep. And that bothered me. We got a picture with the we got a picture with the trophy though. We did get the we did get the picture with the trophy, and that was amazing. Uh Yeah, that's better than a t-shirt. Yeah, I I think they just don't realize how much some of the baseball merch could actually sell. That if they made Feeny, if they made that hat, they could make bank. Oh yeah. Every time I put a picture, they did. They stopped selling it. Yeah. yeah. Every time I put a picture of it up on social, that is the first three comments. Yes. Where can I get that? Hat? Where can I buy that? Where can I buy yep. that? Mm-hmm. Now they did. There. I don't know how many times I've told people that it's from Lamonis's summer camp, and yep. they never made them again. Yep. People thought they were new hats when the guys started wearing them. Yeah. Yep. Greg thought they were new. He wrote on social media, "New lids." Like, no, yes. they're old. new. New for the season. The first time they wore them, sure. 
<laughs> not new though. Yep. Sure. Yes. Um, but they are. He I mean, didn't know. He wasn't here. Yeah. I mean, I'm at least encouraged that that there's jerseys out there now. Yes. And there had not been before, and those yes. are even being sold at the at, at, at the Bart now. Yeah. So they're at the place at the Bart now. So I do wish they'd bring back those old school yep. throwbacks. I've got one in my closet, and mm-hmm. I'm so glad that I was able to snag it before they stopped selling them. But those really old school throwback ones, those are some of my favorites. I wish they'd. Oh, that's wear a score. You still have it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. I'm not that getting rid smart. of that thing. <laughs> All right. Well, as I said, I will get uh, the uh, pickums up on the site once I have uh, Josh's, and uh, you'll probably be hearing this late Thursday, Friday morning is when I expect to have this uh, this podcast out. Um, so, uh, but again, just remember we recorded this on Wednesday night. Um, so the uh, Maryland series, uh, Chris has given the details on that. Um, obviously, hey, if you can get out to the BART, uh, it's uh, the team could really use some support. This is going to be a huge, huge series and uh, hopefully uh, another opportunity for uh, for Indiana to make its mark on the Big Ten season. So uh, for Josh Bennett, Cassidy Palmer, and Chris Feeney, I'm Carl James. See you at the BART.